Hello, and welcome to another paper two question. This is Edexcel IGCSE Computer Science. Now, for a description of this paper, please see the link above. I've gone through the details of this in my first video. So without further ado, let's jump in and look at question three today. Question three looks at reading from and writing to external txt files so for this question what you're given is a txt file called email now it is really important that it is in the same folder as your program otherwise this isn't going to work it's going to be looking for this file and if it can't find it the program's not going to work you're going to get a runtime error so what the program is going to do is it's going to open that file. Then it's going to look through that file. It's going to check each email address, checking that it is an email address. It's going to check that it's got the at symbol in there. And any that don't, any that don't meet those requirements, it's going to put into an error.txt file. And you are asked to use Q. 03a to complete the program and not add anything else to the program other than what you're asked to do so here is my folder and here's the email file and here's q03a so if we look at it we're not given anything other than five comments there and you're given prompts as to where you need to write the code so the first bit of code we need to do first code is to open the data file so to open a file in Python, I need to write with open brackets. And now I need the name of the file. And in this case, when I look in the folder, it's called email.txt. And you'll see in the question there, it's called email.txt. So I need to put single quotation marks there email dot txt it's really important you spell it correctly if there's a capital letter you put that in there if it's a txt file then you need to write dot txt close quotation what do i want to do with it different options here the first thing i want to do and usually for most questions would be to read that file so R is read. I've also got W for write and A for append, which means to add to it. But I want to read that file. I want to look at that file as input file. This is the name of the variable where it's going to be stored. It's going to be really important in my next line of code. So my second line here, create a variable called email list okay email list email list equals input file so what i'm doing now dot read lines is i'm reading in each line brackets there okay so read lines reads each individual line in the file okay and that's going to store that in email list so now i've broken down each email address each line in the file my next job is then to open an output file that's going to store all the email addresses that don't meet the criteria so when an email address is rejected because it doesn't contain an at symbol, it's going to put it in an error.txt file. So output file, and this is the second bullet point here. Output file equals open. Okay, open the file. So the command here is open error.txt now error 
.txt doesn't actually exist, but it's going to create this file and it's going to A for append. It's going to add all these email addresses that are incorrect, that don't contain the at symbol into this file. So for the benefit of this video, I've added a comment there. In your exam, you don't really need to do that. But just for the benefit of explaining some of the code, I've added some comments in there. Now, next next bit of code that I need to do here, find the errors and write to output file. So I need to find all the email addresses that don't contain an at symbol and put them in the error file. So I need a for loop. I need to loop through the address. Okay, for address. And the name of the variable is address. For address in email list. So that is the broken down list that I've now created. Colon. Indentation. If not... at so if it, if i can't find an at in address so i'm going to comment that so if it cannot find the at symbol if not in address if not at in address indentation output so i need to write i'm writing to the file now output file dot write brackets address so it's going to write to the output file the offending email address that doesn't contain an at symbol so add the wrong email address to the error.txt file. Now we are nearly finished. All I need to do now is close those files. So I need to close the output file. So I'll write output file.close. Otherwise it will still be open. And then I need to close the input file as well. And dot close allows me to do that with the brackets. Now, I'm going to save that and run that and see what happens. Now, bit of fun here. I had an error, a syntax error. I'm missing the colon. So, save it again as Q03A finished, which is what the question asked me to do. And we'll run it again and try it again. Okay. That should have been indented there. So I'd expect an indent block. Right. Save it and run it again. My if is missing a colon. Right. And now it works. So I should have in my folder, which I have, an error txt file. Let's open that and these are all the email addresses so i'm just having a quick look through none of them contain the at symbol so my program works there question b explain one drawback of using the merge sort algorithm to source large data sets to marks now i'm linking above to this where i've gone through in a previous video, I did some time back what the merge sort algorithm is, how that works. Basically, it takes a list and it breaks it up, breaks it down, breaks it down to the elements of the list till they're in single digits and then reassembles it in the correct order. So, disadvantages. So, to be able to, to perform the merge sort to be able to perform the merge sort more storage space is needed which is inefficient 
So again, I'm linking to the video where I've gone through that, but you'll see that um, as it breaks the list down, it needs to store them somewhere. So more storage space is needed than just sorting the list in place. So the list isn't sorted in place. It needs that extra storage space to be able to break that list down. Let's look at question C. Open Q03C in the code editor. So this is it. And we can look at it and see, oh, well, the only thing we've got there are two lines of comments. There's no pseudo code. It's pretty much, and um, that's all we're getting. And at this stage, that's that's all, all we get for this this exam. And you need to be in a position when you take this exam that you're confident to write code without looking at pseudocode. You, you're looking at the logic here that you're given in the question. And you're able to take that and write your program. So we need to write a program that display the square and cube of number between 1 and 50 entered by a user. So remember from math, the square is the number multiplied by itself. And the cube is a number multiplied by itself and multiplied by itself again. So that's three times. Square is a number to the power of two and cube is a number to the power of three. So if the number was one, the square would be one times one. If, the, if, the, if it was a cube, it'd be one times one times one. The code must ask the user to enter a number between one and 50 inclusive. Display the number, the square of the number and the cube of the number with appropriate labels. Stop when the number outside of the range 1 to 50 is entered. So if 51, 52, etc. were entered, it wouldn't work. Save your code as Q03C finished with the correct file extension in Python. So this is this is what we're given here. And as I said, it, it isn't very much. So I'm going to be in a position here where we can write some code. And the first thing I'm going to do is initialize a variable because I want to use a while loop here. Okay, I want to use a while loop. Now, I'm going to use a while because I want the program to only work when the number entered is between the range of 1 to 50. So, in order to be able to get that to work, I need to initialize the variable at the beginning. Otherwise, my while loop won't work. The error I get will say variable not initialized so i need to initialize that here my value equals one so you can see that i've commented that code but obviously that is just for the purposes of this video you're not expected to comment your code like that in the exam so while my while loop then while my value which starts at one is greater than or equal to one so it will start looping and my value is less than or equal to 50. I could put, change that. I could put greater than zero or less than 51, but I'm just gonna put that greater than or equal to one and less than or equal to 50 here. Okay. Now I need the integer input from my user equals int, int for integer input. And I need to ask them to enter a value between 1 and 50. Close quotation, close brackets, close parenthesis there. And I've got double brackets there, so I need to close that again. Okay. And I'm going to put a colon there just for making that look tidy in the space to make that look tidy when it's printed off. Okay, so now they're going to input an integer. What do I need to do with that? So, an if. So if the value, if the value that they input is greater than or equal to one, and my value less than or equal to 50 so this is different to the while loop because this is a conditional so if is a conditional conditional based based on the value there so this won't loop this is only going to work 
if the value is between those two numbers. So we're now going to print my output for the user. So value. OK, the value then. So I'm constructing my sentence here. So the value that they input, comma, my value, so whatever that is that they've input. OK. Square. So here's the square of it. Now there's two ways to go with this. You can do my value times two or my value times my value. Now for the sake of space, because I'm going to run out of space, I'm going to do it multiplied by two there. Okay, so that would be the square. And now the cube. And I need to do the same calculation, but this time multiply it by three. Again, I can do my value times my value times my value, but for the sake of space here, I'm not going to do that because I'm going to run out. I'm going to run out of space. So just just for this purpose of this, I'm going to do it like that. So now I've saved it as Q03C finished, and I'm going to run it. So now I get it works. So I enter my value, so 2. So the value is 2. So the square of 2 is 4. 2 times 2 is 4. And the cube is 6, which is correct. And because I put that in the while loop, I get the option to do that again. Now, just a slightly simpler solution here. Um, this time I've taken out the while loop and I've just kept the original code in there. For the if but I've, I've no longer got a while loop so if I run that and I test that out I can only run that once so that's a slightly simpler slightly different solution there to the program okay so the first solution it, it ran again using the while loop which is quite good and the second solution ran only once because um, I took out that while loop so that is that question finished and that is out of 14 marks thanks very much for watching today guys and see you in the next video bye bye